Yo, what's going on, y'all? Welcome back. We're going to be diving into some more Bitcoin news, some more Bitcoin information today. We're diving through a lot of Bitcoin because Bitcoin has really been on a tear as far as information goes, as far as perspectives and, and the content that's coming out and what people have to say about it and people's thoughts and opinions. And obviously here on the channel, I'd like to give my thoughts and opinions and where I see things going. I don't view myself as some crypto expert. I'm not a financial advisor, anything like that. I'm, I'm a regular person. I feel like I'm just a regular person who I'm in the game like most of you all are. And we're just trying to get as much information, as much sauce as we p possibly can and hopefully get more and more gains. And maybe we have caught on early to something that potentially starts to rule the world at one point in time. And imagine how crazy that would be if Bitcoin one day was to become the king of everything, the currency, and we all believed in it now and and earlier than now like that that would be crazy if bitcoin actually becomes what we believe that is capable of becoming but that being said let's jump to the video see what um see what he thinks and yeah let's get into it y'all holy crap we have states now getting ready to buy bitcoin we have new nations talking about it as well let's go through what's happening in the market right now i just got off the plane back you know getting back to real life I have to wait a little bit for the ride so i figured why not update you on some of the crazy stuff that i've seen coming from politicians since i just posted the video a few hours ago really appreciate everyone too that's watching the channel by the way this is amazing this is amazing um promotion promotion for cryptocurrency the fact that the president is talking about it now and and it's more of a you know, it's becoming huge. Like it's becoming the like the more these officials speak on this currency, the more it legitimizes itself. Like it's gonna, it's just legitimate just by the fact that they're even mentioning it. And I, I think that obviously BlackRock behind supporting it and stuff like that. Like that's all of this is huge, really. Um, it's huge for it. You can always hit subscribe if you haven't done that already. And I really appreciate everyone that reached out to me and introduced themselves at the conference. I know I've said that several times, but. I really want to get that across because it's awesome. If you want to trade crypto, there's a link underneath the video to Marjax. You can start trading crypto in just a few seconds. You can leverage trade there. Also, there's a link underneath the video to CoinW as well in case you want to trade futures or spot in the same place. Now, let me just make sure that you can actually see my screen here. Awesome. Like I said, there's been some crazy stuff. We, we've covered Trump. We've covered what he is going to do if he becomes president, at least what he says he's going to do. But look at this. This is the game theory. Even if Trump does not become president, which at this point, it looks like the markets are pricing that in or are maybe not pricing in, but are assuming that he's going to become president. Even without that, the game theory is happening. In the last video, I read some catalysts rate cuts, stockpile narrative, and FTX, 16 billion in cash. What I'm about to talk to you about is the Bitcoin stockpile narrative. Look at this. Hong Kong lawmaker endorses Bitcoin, strategic Bitcoin reserve strategy, or stockpile. This is obvious, but not obvious to everyone that if Donald Trump is talking about this, if Donald Trump is talking about this, obviously other countries are going to consider doing this. All right. So, I mean, regardless of what you want to say about Trump, he's an amazing businessman. Now, I know like the, the counter to that is usually, oh, he, he's put people out of jobs. He's this. He's that. A lot of businesses have gone under. A lot of things didn't work out how you thought that it would. But the fact that you're still here, you're still in a powerful position. You still are, you know, you're still being talked about and and. A lot of people still have feelings towards you one way or another. It just shows you his level of success. So it should be taken very seriously when a finance guy who's very successful in the space comes out and in support of something. Now, I, like I said, I've said it in a past video, I don't believe Trump fully understands crypto and what it's about. But the fact that he's open to opportunity, that's just that business mindset. Like, And that's what, that's what I actually love about it. I, I, I love the business mindset that he has, which is kind of something that I, I keep separate from any of his personal beliefs or anything like that. I, I don't I don't know the guy. I don't care about any of that stuff. Like the the drama side of things, I could care less. I don't care if he likes that race. I don't care if he hates me by my skin color, even though I, I honestly would be surprised if he's really that shallow and dumb. But I mean it is what it is. Like I, I really couldn't care less. Um but yeah. Anyway, let's jump back in. The US is not the only one that's done research on Bitcoin. 
there's going to be China, there's going to be Russia, there's going to be uh, other countries that want gonna be global. some kind of allocation. And it makes sense. And we have more stuff in a second, but it makes sense. Some people might say, oh, well, they could just go short the market or try to destroy the market. Okay, but if they destroy Bitcoin, what does that do to the U.S.? Really nothing, right? But if it goes well, they could get more of an asset that's going to appreciate and be very valuable and very important in the future. So being pro something that has uh, that has endless upside is better than being short something that can only go down to zero, right? It's not going to hurt the U.S. If Bitcoin goes down to zero, it'll hurt us as individuals our freedoms, our ability to control our own narrative, but no one can no one can do that anyways. If China went out and shorted a bunch of Bitcoin or if they went out and you know tried to create some issue, they couldn't do it long term. Sure there could be headwind headwinds, but you can't crush Bitcoin. Now you have too many strong hodlers and obviously you can't compete with whole nations, but um I feel like we got a strong group of hodlers in this in this space. So yeah, I feel like it would just be a tough, a tough time more so than something permanent at all. Like the technology does not change. And that's what's so beautiful about it. Um, it's it's there. It's there. So countries are looking at buying Bitcoin. Maybe Japan next. Maybe Russia. Maybe Norway. Maybe insert your country. But keep this in mind too. States, many governments are also looking at Bitcoin. Louisiana, this is coming from their governor, okay? 57th governor of Louisiana is tweeting, Louisiana is a leader in Bitcoin, banning CBDCs and protecting self-custody. We should continue to lead by having a strategic reserve of Bitcoin like Donald Trump suggests. Now, I'm not sure if he's saying that, the first time I read this, I thought you were saying Louisiana. I assume that's what he means. Maybe he's just saying uh, that the country should have it, but it seems like he's saying literally the state of Louisiana should have a strategic reserve. This is not a pension. This is the actual state government. And what was the tweet underneath that? Pierre Rochard, who is VP of research at Riot Platforms, says Texas should follow Louisiana and acquire a strategic Bitcoin reserve. Okay, this is fascinating. Now. This is where game theory gets really important. It's really important not to be last to an asset that appreciates exponentially. You wanna be first. What does that mean? You kinda of try to get it done very quickly, very aggressively. These nations, these governments are quite wealthy, so they can purchase large, large amounts. I'm sure there's some rules maybe being even set in the government like, hey, we know you want Bitcoin, but you have to wait until this point. You have to wait until this is done. Kind of like with financial advisors, right? There are some financial advisors, actually one that we talked to last night, that he's the only one in his office that likes Bitcoin, and he can't. He still can't push it towards clients. Like he's a Bitcoin maxi, he still can't push it to clients yet. So it takes time. Even this will take time, most likely. But we. This is like honestly, this is why I got out of, um, you know, like working, working for companies and and stuff like that. Um, everything takes too long. Everything does take time. You can't just make a decision, oop, change, and start working. Get straight to the part that's fun, like seeing if your plan, your strategy is going to play out and things like that. You can't do that. You have to wait for approvals, wait for certain things. And it's always a wait, 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 wait. So this is where if you're an investor, we, we benefit here because this is the one circumstance where them taking a long time to do everything allows us to stack, allow, allows us to keep building up our own portfolios, allow us to get into a position where we could potentially have a, a huge, huge upside um, once this stuff starts to come through. So yeah, I, I love I love that aspect of the game. The fact that yeah, like this is where the slow moving nature of the rest of the world benefits us investors, us bullish investors, investors who believe that you know this is this is going to be the future. So we're going hard in it. So yeah, we have endless money in this world to buy this finite asset, and everyone is changing. Gives you goosebumps. Now, this is going to continue to happen. 
if, if you remember Jason Lowry, who wrote a book talking about ba basically Bitcoin game theory, using it for s security, he had to take his book down. He said, don't worry, don't worry, because <laughs> this is a good thing. I'm guessing, personally, I'm guessing he got paid to take that book down a significant amount. And he was told to take it down because it gives the playbook for other nations to do something that the U.S. is doing. Now, I also don't think they would need him to take that down if the goal is just to hold on to Bitcoin, right? Like, why, why, why does it matter if Bitcoin's price goes up to the U.S.? Why does it matter if other countries get their hands on Bitcoin? when you already hold all the Bitcoin you're ever gonna buy. Like at that point, okay, let it appreciate a ton, right? Because then your Bitcoin is worth a lot more. It doesn't matter, they can figure, everyone's gonna figure it out, every country's gonna figure it out, it's just gonna take time. And again, if you have all the Bitcoin you ever want, then it's not important to cut off that playbook. But, and to cut off uh, the explanation for why Bitcoin's so important, but that does make sense, the government to ask him to take it down if you're trying to get your hands on more Bitcoin, if you need time to get your hands on more Bitcoin. Again, they had this Bitcoin already. They already had this 210,000, and Trump kind of alluded to the fact that so far it's all been confiscated. Why would you say so far it's all been confiscated unless you are implying that eventually that's not gonna be the case? Mm. Some people say we're not bullish enough. The bulls are not bullish enough. I think that's the case. Now, of course, you know, I'm a little bit biased. <laughs> I've been drinking the Bitcoin Kool-Aid. There's gonna be volatility. There's gonna be lots of volatility. So you have to be able to weather those storms. I think that it's important to be able to catch key things like that. Like um, the fact that they said, for now, that that's how it's been acquired. Um, it's important to catch those nuanced things because all it takes is, is being right once. And you put a bunch of pieces together. I mean, Bitcoin, it only goes like it, it, it happens like like look at the just look at everything, piece everything together. And it only go it only becomes like one of the biggest currencies at some point. I mean, it already is becoming that, but it only goes one direction. And obviously there's risk to that. Nothing is guaranteed, not financial advice, all of that. But. Um, it's just my own opinion that um, Bitcoin is, is going to be unstoppable, um, but that's just me. You have to be able to make it through to the other side without, without losing too much, right? If you can't handle the volatility, you can lose. So outlast everyone. Hold on to your Bitcoin. Not financial advice, but look at what's happening. Let me know your thoughts underneath the video. Really appreciate everyone for watching. If you want to trade crypto, like I said, yeah, so there we have it, y'all. Um, let me know what you all think. How do you all feel about Bitcoin? Um, definitely a lot more Bitcoin content coming here on the channel, so be sure to subscribe, drop that thumbs up. A lot more interesting crypto content, finance content, and just things to basically um, help inspire, motivate, and give us a little bit more information towards our goals of financial freedom and building wealth here on the channel. So yeah, that being said, be sure to drop that thumbs up, subscribe, turn on notifications, and I will catch you all in the next one. Peace out, y'all.